we're going to show you how to swap the 12 volt battery in a Tesla with a D drivetrain. So this will be a little bit different. Uh, some D models will have the, the HEPA filter. This one does not, so this doesn't have the bioweapon defense mode filter. But uh, it's, it's largely the same except for that filter does, is not in the way. And so it's, it's even easier to get to the 12 volt battery. In either case, they're fairly easy to get to the 12 volt battery. This swap takes 20 to 30 minutes at the most to do. So the first steps on this car are gonna be to power down the vehicle. To do that, open the front, open the driver's door, roll the driver's window down, and then in the MCU, we'll go to power down or power off. After you've got that done, you'll come up to the front and we're gonna remove the front liner and then you'll see the 12 volt battery and it'll be very, uh, very clear how to access and swap that battery out. All right, to get the car into power off mode, we'll touch the uh, menu button, then safety and security and power off. After you do this, you'll wanna make sure not to touch any of the, like the brake pedal or the door handles or anything electronic because it'll, it'll reboot the whole car. Uh, also, before you do this, we want to make sure that the front is open and the driver's side, uh, the driver's door is open and the window is rolled down. Because again, if we change, try to change any of those things after powering it down, it's going to reboot the car and so it's going to wake it back up. So we're going to power off after we make sure the front is open and the driver's uh, window is down and the door is open. Now we'll actually take the whole front out. So in doing that, we're going to take the side trim panels off. You can do that without removing these uh, frunk height adjusters. And then we'll remove the, uh, the trim piece that's at the top. Then the carpeted liner inside of the frunk. There's going to be a series of 10 millimeter bolts, as well as a couple of 13 millimeter bolts that need to be removed to get the, the, the plastic front tub out. So we'll remove all of those bolts and then we'll be able to lift that front tub out. To remove the carpeting inside of the front, just, just lift up the rubber, uh, the rubber air gap here and then the carpet is separate. And you can just walk your way around separating it. Then there's a button and a light in the front. The button, just the, the connector just pulls straight out. The light actually has a clip. So you have to push down on the clip and then slide out. out of the way you can see the 12 volt battery here and the terminals and everything it takes to get it out pretty straightforward you just need a 10 millimeter wrench we're going to remove these three bolts and then you need an 8 millimeter wrench to remove the lugs off the top so go ahead and remove the 8 millimeter uh, bolts and don't do the uh, don't do the lug the lug bolts which are 10 millimeter just take these top ones off because we're going to use that adapter that's in there to connect to the new battery. Before we take this battery off though, we want to disable the high voltage side of the vehicle. To do that on the Model S, we're going to actually remove the high voltage interlock loop, which is also called the first responder cut loop, which is a orange or red loop located up here. So you get to that. We're going to need to remove this air box uh, and this trim piece here, which I will show you how to do. It's gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench. Body clips, there's two of them that you'll need to remove. One on this arm here. And there's usually one right underneath here. In this vehicle, it's missing. And you'll commonly find some of these little clips could be missing in, in many cars. Then just push this up and it'll hold itself out of the way. Remove your air filter. It's also a great time to check your air filter that it's clean. 
and if not, go ahead and replace it. Then 10 millimeter uh, wrench to remove going to be one on either side of that air box. Push these clips up and then that whole part will slide out of the way. So with that air box out of the way, you can now access the connector on this cut loop. To remove it, you press in on this side. It's easier if you have two hands or two fingers available to push down on that side. Until you hear it click and then pull from this side. Then separate those two. What this does is it disables the high voltage battery from being able to close its contactors, which keeps it offline. It keeps the high voltage battery from powering anything up in the car. It's really useful if you're ever servicing anything on your car and you wanna make sure that the big battery pack can't connect and won't connect and, and potentially shock you. So disconnect it. Uh, in this case, it's really important because it allows the DC to DC converter to totally shut down, which allows us to safely remove the 12 volt and safely uh, also get the DC to DC to recalibrate to the new 12 volt battery, which will help to clear the air. Sometimes if you go through this process of swapping your 12 volt and you don't do that, you may still have a 12 volt replacement warning in your dash. So you wanna make sure you do this to allow the car to totally power down. Also give it two minutes after this is disconnected and the 12 volt battery is disconnected. That two minutes will make sure that everything in the car is, is totally powered down uh, and nothing is, is just using some residual power left in the car to stay, to stay awake. Now actually removing the 12 volt battery. This plastic cover comes off by just peeling up the side and then lift it off. Then you've got three bolts to remove. They're all 10 millimeter. Then this bracket pops up. Now you use an eight millimeter wrench to remove these two bolts. Start with the negative, loosen it, remove it, and then tuck it over here and then get your positive off. At this point, the 12 volt battery can pop out and you can put the new one in in the same orientation but make sure we wait at least two minutes in full from when you first removed that negative terminal before you reconnect the first responder loop and then subsequently connect the battery. Uh, it typically takes that long anyways, but just make sure you do allow at least a full two minutes to elapse in case you're really fast at moving everything around. Now we'll just Go ahead and reinstall the bracket and secure the three bolts that hold it down. Now we'll get the uh, terminals connected. Start with the positive. The reason we'll, we'll always start with the positive when reconnecting and start with the negative when disconnecting is because anytime in a vehicle you can, you'll want to spend more time with the negative loose hanging about than you want to spend with the positive loose hanging about. And that's just to prevent potential shorts. So when you've got the positive down, we're just going to give it a little bit to snug it. Don't need to over tighten that and then you can secure the plastic cap on the top. 
same thing about shorting. That's why as soon as you put the positive on, you'll want to put whatever kind of cover on any vehicle, but on these vehicles, of course, this plastic cover, but you always want to put whatever kind of cover you can over it because when you go to start securing the negative, what you don't want to have happen is a potential arc between your tool on the two terminals of the battery. This is a short wrench specifically to prevent that from happening, but if you were using a longer wrench because that's what you got, then it could potentially create a problem. So you want to make sure to avoid those situations. Before we connect the negative side, we're actually going to connect the first responder loop. I'll show you how to do that. Connecting the first responder loop is easy. Just make sure that the uh, lock is fully extended and then press the plug in and push the lock slide as it's going in. Uh, you'll, you'll feel it click. You'll see it make a nice substantial connection. And you want to make sure that the two uh, maroon tabs are sticking out on this side. That indicates that it's fully locked. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the air filter box right here. Two 10 millimeter bolts are going to go in and you're going to first slide the plastic tray in and then clip it to the top. Then put your two 10 millimeters in, put your filter back in, then this will go down and we'll resecure it with some clips. going to now make the final connection, which is to get this 12 volt negative lug connected. When you make this connection, you're going to hear fans and pumps come back on and all of that is normal and the vehicle is going to wake back up. Be aware that a decent amount of inrush current is going to happen when this connection gets made, which means that if you do it really slow and soft, you're going to see a lot of arcing. But if you get it on there pretty quick, uh, you'll minimize the arcing. So if you push that on into its spot very quick like that, you won't get much uh, arcing at all. And then you can put the bolt down the center and hand thread it to snug, and then finish it with your wrench. Now we'll do the reassembly. So you're gonna re-secure the frunk, which is the big plastic liner. Uh, make sure when you're doing that, you pull before you secure it, pull the connectors for your light and for the emergency release through the tub. If you have the type of tub that that's a necessity, on some, it's actually, you don't have to do that. Uh, but on in this example that we're actually doing, you do need to secure this inside of the tub or else it's just gonna be hidden underneath the front and you wanna be able to plug it back into the carpet liner. So make sure you pull that through and press the rubber gasket into its spot and then you're going to secure the two big 13 millimeters, the smaller ones up front, which are eight millimeters. Then reinsert the carpet. Make sure you plug the carpet in, the, 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 the light and the uh, emergency release button. And then we can replace all of the plastic trim, which will just, will just all clip on to place uh, in, in, in spots. So now your battery is brand new and you not only have 
a new battery, but you have a much better battery. You have a battery that's going to last you about four times as long as the factory battery, and it weighs less than half of what your old battery weighed. Not only those two big things, but it's also more efficient. So during each charge or discharge cycle of the 12 volt battery, it loses less energy to heat, and it's uh, more environmentally friendly. With with lead being as uh, environmentally destructive as it is, these batteries are actually much more environmentally friendly, and you use less of them, and it's less material each time. You need to use one as well. So those those are really great benefits. If you have any trouble during your installation or after the installation, if you have issues with getting getting computer resets done, uh, just go ahead and contact us. Uh, contact us. We're at omu.com slash support. We have a web chat system there uh, that uh, will get in touch with you quickly and uh, solve whatever issues you have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your Tesla.